Coming up. Just feed efficiency, you're eating 30% less calories. Your pastures can go a lot longer and run them 75 days in the feedlot. We come out everything choice and better. Some of the improvements Jim Jensen's made in feed efficiency has uh, gained him more net per calf. Lucky 7 Angus is setting new standards in beef cattle feed efficiency next on The American Rancher. Pam Minnick and welcome to the American Rancher. Years ago, Jim Jensen at Lucky 7 Angus set out to create feed efficiency in beef cattle. Jim's work, research, and data has resulted in up to 30% increases in documented feed efficiency, making ranchers more profitable nationwide. These feed efficient cattle are healthier, more drought tolerant, and second to none for carcass quality. On today's show, we'll meet some producers who run these cattle, and we'll show you how Lucky 7 Angus Genetics are setting new standards in the beef industry. We're at Boulder, Wyoming, uh, about 7,200 feet. This is called the uh, nation's icebox because of the coldest daily temperature in the United States. And you add that along with big pastures that we have. We have some pastures don't even have a fence line that probably into the several hundred thousand, if not millions of acres. Uh, right now, we're in some grassy areas, but if you can see, we have a lot of very arid ground where the cattle have to graze pretty fast in order to get something to eat. So just a real tough place to make a living here. It's really tough on the animals and the ranchers. We're sitting in a valley that's uh, mainly, used to be a mainly Hereford Valley. Uh, our program was 100% Herefords for years and Probably, well, I was 12 or 13 years old. My dad and I, we uh, went together on a real high dollar Harford bull. He was real fat and pretty when we bought him. Uh, by that fall, you couldn't tell the bull. He looked like an anorexic milk cow, and he basically ruined every cow that we got. A few years later, I ended up having the opportunity to buy some cows, and a register set of cows was selling. So I went and bought about 10 or 15 head of those cattle. and. Before I even had the calves on the ground, people were buying the bull, so that kind of got me into the business. But I go back to my roots of uh, the friends and family and neighbors and all the fellow ranchers around here. I always wanted to make them the most money possible. So going back to the bulls that wouldn't work here, we wanted to make bulls that could work here. So we had to run those bulls in tougher conditions than any commercial cowman would. And that was part of the program that we started here. It worked extremely well. People were, in, you know, they were having a good luck with the bulls and uh, the bulls were holding up, cattle were holding up better. From there, being above 7,000 feet, we decided that we would go into the PAP testing, which would make sense for my high elevation customers and all the friends and neighbors around me. And uh, we got into that, uh, sent a lot of benchmarks. We set the, the first ever standards in the industry for uh, PAP testing. And uh, we then went on to become the, probably the leader in the industry in high elevation and PAP testing. We've noticed as we were chasing the brisket disease and trying to eliminate it, that we had a lot less sickness and death loss in our animals. And we also have noticed that there's a lot less of the animals in lower elevation feedlots that are dying due to right heart failure because of the work we've done. From there, uh, we started to work on feed efficiency. If you look at like Kansas State University did a study and they figure at least 70% of your cost of doing business is feed associated costs. The only way you can prove out feed efficiency is to have some sort of scientific data that will absolutely prove how many pounds of a nutrient that these animals eat versus how many pounds they gain or what it takes to maintain. It's the low hanging fruit and it would make the most money for any rancher in the industry, number one. Number two, nobody was doing it, so we hung our hat on that. We purchased a grow safe feed efficient system. And we have data and we've got substantiated proof of the feed efficiency and how these cattle are eating less. The older cows, we know for a fact that we're running 35 to 40% more cows per acre than we used to. Up next. With this feed efficiency, you're eating 30% less calories. Your pastures can go a lot longer 
and run them 75 days in the feedlot, we come out everything choice and better. Lucky 7 feed efficient cattle eat less, save money, and are also environmentally friendly. That story when the American Rancher continues. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Compared to other proteins, the beef industry is decades behind in feed efficiency. But lucky seven Angus cattle are already there. Jim Jensen's investments into feed intake research are not just proving that his cattle are feed efficient, they demonstrate other important economic benefits as well. One thing that happened when we started the feed efficiency thing is uh, we started having customers come to us and say that they had 75 to 100 pounds heavier calves than they used to have. And that's hard to believe when you're not producing a, an animal that's a, a big overgrown uh, performance type animal. We produce mother cows. From there, we decided to go ahead and feed out a lot of our cows. If I'm gonna tell everybody I got the most feed efficient cattle in the world, I'm gonna to have to go out there and do a little more proof other than just what I can do on my ranch. And so we started feeding out a lot of our own animals. And yeah, we definitely hit a home run with the feed efficiency, uh, which is 10 to 15% higher than, than the feedlot averages. But the interesting thing was, is our carcass numbers was off the charts. It is very seldom that we don't have a set of cattle that go 100% choice and better. In the last two years, we've had several sets that went up to 59% prime. And so that's an advantage that we never even thought we had. Another thing that happened, we have two producers that went all in with our genetics. And these two producers in the last two years have had animals that weighed 1,400 pounds and were marketed at 13 months, 100% choice and better. This is a huge economic advantage because instead of hitting the June, July, August market, now you're hitting the April, May market, which is about a $220 advantage. Not very many people has ever seen animals that can go to the rail at 1,400 pounds at 13 months, and we weren't even trying to get it. Feed efficiency just give us that advantage. A lot of time, the idea is that if we get cattle to gain more, they're gonna be more efficient. There's, there is a good correlation there. But it doesn't mean that the calves, uh, that if you, just because you have faster rate of gains, doesn't mean you've also got feed efficiency following along for the trip. So the, you know, the question is, uh, which is, which has the most value to the producer, average daily gain or feed efficiency? If you contrast two average daily gains of, uh, let's say four pounds a day versus 3.2 pounds per day, and you use a 35 cent per day yardage, really the difference between those two is gonna be days on feed. And that amounts to only about $15 difference between those two, uh, those two average daily gains, assuming they're at the same feed efficiency. If you contrast a feed efficiency of 6.5 at closeout versus 5.6, and the diet's around 313 to $320 per ton in terms of cost, that difference is close to $70 uh, between those two calves. And I think it just, that just highlights the importance of really a focus on feed efficiency uh, and not, you know, not just gain or some of the typical performance parameters that we, uh, we focus on. When Jim and I first talked and he talked about uh, that his primary focus had been on feed efficiency uh, in his genetic decisions uh, in the past, I was, uh, curious to see if he could back that up with real-time data. And uh, what we have seen is exactly that. I mean, uh, to put it in context, I just want to be clear that we do get to feed uh, some of the best cattle in the, in the country. The thing that's been interesting to see over the years and as more and more data has come in is, is that not only are his claims of feed efficiency extremely accurate, their carcass quality would rank right up there with the top 5% of what we get to feed in a given year too. So. When we first started with this program, we were trying to create animals that were designed for Boulder, Wyoming, one of the toughest places in the world. High elevation, extreme temperatures, extreme tough conditions. At this point in time, we've been to a lot of different places. Uh, right now, we send a few bulls to Texas, uh, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Kansas. Uh, Nebraska. So we're branching out to several states as the people are finding out that these cattle are not only working here, but they're working everywhere else. Being in eastern Oklahoma, the bulls have worked extremely well for us. When they hit the ranch, they're in their work clothes. 
They stay with the cows. They're aggressive from the day we put them in to the day we pull them out at the end of calving season. They, they, they've proven to be very sound, uh, gain their condition back very well at the end of breeding season. And in the last few years, we have, while staying moderate on the EPDs that we look for, we have stressed a little more on the feed efficiency side. We recently added on to our ranch, we bought a few more acres uh, right there close. Uh, we got with the local ag agencies and they prepared us a grazing plan on what they thought would, would work. We went in, uh, all lucky seven females, with lucky seven bulls, and we ran almost twice as many cattle on the place as they had recommended, plus we cut the hay on it. So that has to go back to something and it has to be the feed efficiency of, of Lucky Seven Bulls. After the break. Jim Jensen and Lucky Seven Angus proved that those cattle are feed efficient. We are doing more with less feed. Lucky Seven Angus genetics live longer, healthier, and will be branded as Da Vinci cattle. You're watching The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Lucky Seven Angus develops cattle that are feed efficient and more environmentally friendly. Their proven feed efficiency in real world conditions will help cattle producers rise above the ever increasing environmental challenges that are facing today's beef industry. You know, the thing that's interesting about feed efficiency, research we did with that, when we uh, took um, genetics from a, a sire that we knew uh, and was feed efficient or had a negative residual feed intake number and contrasted that to a positive residual feed intake the more inefficient animal what we were able to see are improvements in feed efficiency of 10 to 14 percent in f1s first generation and you know i've looked at some of jim jensen's bulls and the top end of his bulls will be eating 65 percent what population average is so and, and Jim would even tell you some of the improvements he's made in feed efficiency has uh, gained him more net per calf than what carcass quality uh, selection has so I think that the take-home message is you can make really good uh, progress in the first generation when you use the genetics and there is uh, there's potential to really add to that once you get uh, multi-year selection for the trait through feed efficiency testing, we have got the closest thing that there will ever be to drought tolerant cattle. These cattle were created to do more on less, exactly what they need to do in a drought. And through our customers' testimonials and what we've seen, these cattle are absolutely tolerating these droughts better. Harding Ranch has been in Wyoming since 1922. It's been my dad, my brother, and I the last three years. I decided to go all cow-calf and sell calves to buyers in the fall and start selling custom beef to customers. Since we went to Lucky 7 Angus Genetics, our, our cow herd and our genetics are second to none when it comes to drought and feed efficiency. We can turn these bulls out on bleached out winter grass and they don't need any supplementation. They continue to flourish, their body score continues to grow. And the calves, we've noticed the same. The cows and calves do amazing in, in drought. The calves were weaning 650 pound calves. Pastures are holding up much better. With this feed efficiency, you're eating 30% less calories. Your pastures can go a lot longer. It's just a lot easier to manage. These Lucky 7 cattle can do everything all the others can do and more. We can still have this feed efficiency eating 30% less and we can still go to the feedlot, run them 75 days in the feedlot, we come out everything choice and better. Having the environmental friendly beef and uh, you're feeding them less, you're gonna have less impact on the environment, I think that's gonna appeal to a lot of people that, that we don't have to have these caged up for 150, 180 days to hit the yield we're trying to get. The world loves cowboys. In every John Wayne movie, there's the good cowboy John Wayne and the bad cowboy that's raping and pillaging that John Wayne has to always take out. We need to become the good cowboy at all time and we need to get rid of the image of the bad cowboy. We can do this by showing and proving to the world that we have always been and will continue to be the greatest environmentalists on earth. The new catchword is sustainability. 
Sustainability doesn't work if it's not profitable to the rancher, and it doesn't work if it is not acceptable to the consumer. Cattle that'll eat less and do more, cattle that'll create less emissions because of that, cattle that'll live longer are going to not only be profitable, but it's gonna be acceptable to the consumer. We truly might have the only beef sustainable product in the world right now. We're fifth generation ranchers from Boulder County. I'm the son of a cattle buyer who was the son of a cattle buyer. I backgrounded calves for probably 35 years with a small feedlot of about 3,500 head. And I got to go to a lot of different ranches and travel and see how different people do it and the different breeds of cattle perform. I guess that's what led me to the Angus breed was I thought they were the best performers out of the cattle that we fed. So uh, I always on a quest for the best Angus cattle in the Angus breed and, and bought cattle from, from Montana, South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, to try and improve my herd and, uh, and to see what worked best in my area. And, and in Dwayne's quest to find the best bull, like he did finally land on the cowboy that built the bulls for cowboys. One of the big things that's really helped us, I think, with the Lucky Seven Angus cattle is they can, they're so diverse and uh, a lot of our pastures are irrigated and we also uh, run in mountain pastures that are about as rough a country as it comes. For both segments of it, they seem to do well. We have trouble with the prairie dog population. They, they move in and they, they just uh, devastate the grass. And, and we've lost, oh, I don't know, probably uh, two thirds of our grazing to prairie dogs. There's just nothing left of the grass. They destroy it and then they just kind of snowball and move on. I was on the city of Boulder Prairie Dog Working Group. The, the latest one started in 2018 and the, th the outcome was that we basically are conserving prairie dogs. The thing is, is there was a certified, verified survey in 2012, 30,000 residents out of this 100,000 resident county were interviewed, 89% said they'd rather see the the prairie dogs controlled than to see the ranchers driven out. Well, the feed efficiency has been huge. You know, the feed efficient cattle is, are probably the biggest and best genetic that's come out, the most modern. I mean, Jim Jensen and Lucky Seven Angus and their people up there work very hard to, to make sure that those numbers are right and that they can prove that those cattle are feed efficient and they do more on less and that makes them more environmentally friendly. And, and, the, and the, that's what the cattle industry, I think, is headed for. And that's, that's really helped us a lot in our, in our prairie dog situation because we are having to do <laughs> to more, we are doing more with less feed. So it's been good. What the cattle feeders want is a cow-calf man. You want to sell your calf or sell your breeding cattle at the best price you can possibly do and, uh, and have the best cattle that you can possibly have. And that's, that's why we've always chased that with the Angus breed. And the Lucky Seven Angus has done that for us. Our goal and the results that we are actually seeing are cows that can produce till they're 16 years of age, bulls that can breed till they're 10 years old. Environmental stuff like feed efficiency, less emissions, Cattle that can be in a feedlot for 75 days go 100% choice and better, cage free. These are things that we can do that the rest of the world can't. Right now, we're in the elites when it goes to carcass, cost of gains, and everything else. We can do what they can do, but they can't do what we can do right now. Environmentally friendly, that's something that we have to address and we need to address. And I think the Lucky Seven Angus people are on that and it's helped us a lot with the, with the Boulder and Boulder County that we do have environmentally friendly beef and it's better for the environment. And actually that was a part of the survey too that people really do enjoy seeing that bucolic setting of the happy cattle and it's part of their backdrop. The best cattlemen in the world, the best cowboys in the world, and the best cattle in the world will go hand in hand with this new environmental movement. We will change the perception of the cattle industry and the ranching industry 
forever to the consumers through our environmental testing, our scientific testing, and our marketing, which requires us to change and make a new breed of cattle that will be coming launched soon called Da Vinci Cattle. The big thing I'd push about Lucky 7 is just the honesty of the, of the business. He's, Jim is pushing these ideas and he backs every one of them up. He's got the scientific data to, to back up everything he says he does. He's got the best warranty in the business. You've got four years and I know if you had a problem, Jim's gonna stand by his bulls. It's just so much. You get so much in that package of a Lucky 7 bull. But if anything does happen, you've got Jim's four year no bull guarantee, which he really does back. But I do think that he made their legs tough too, which really does save us a lot also. I can testify to that. We've, we've had some bad luck in the past and Jim's always stood behind his cattle. I invite anybody to come out to our ranch anytime you want and look at the animals. They'll be available. Uh, our sales the first Saturday in March at the Riverton Livestock Auction, Riverton, Wyoming. You can come down there. If nothing else, just drink a cup of coffee. We'd love to visit with you. Uh, but just come see what these cattle look like and what they can do. To find out more about Lucky 7's newly branded Da Vinci Angus cattle, log on to Lucky7Angus.com. The Lucky 7 Angus Bull Sale is the first Saturday of March in Riverton, Wyoming. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.